4.20 p.m. and um, we are in session room three, we have heating. So um, it's all good to start in how to create beautiful apps uh, on data from everywhere. And in this session, I would like to talk about uh, Oracle Application Express and uh, to tell you a bit about what Apex is, uh, what the architecture is, and how you can use it to build applications. Um, before I start with this, um, who of you already knows about Application Express? Has played with it before? Okay, who has never heard about Apex before? Great, cool. And, um, oh dear, yeah, now I know what you meant. Um, a few words about my person uh, in advance. Um, I'm Carsten Tarski, and I'm uh, with Oracle for 18 years now. Um, I joined in March 20, uh, 2001, and I worked 15 years uh, in Germany for the German presets organization uh, together with customers and partners um, on all sorts of application development with the Oracle database, right? Whether this was SQL, PL SQL, uh, spatial, XML, or other stuff. And three, uh, about three years ago, I would, uh, uh, changed internally to be a member of the Apex um, development team. And since then, my focus is on various aspects in the Apex code base, which is web source module. I will tell you later on what it is. Data loading, calendar, and this will all become a bit more clear once we had a look into Apex and uh, what these components can do for you. Right. If you want to follow me on Twitter or to see what I'm talking about on Twitter, uh, above is my Twitter handle. Yeah, that's the slide you will always see if somebody from Oracle does a presentation, safe harbor statement, what does it mean? I might talk about future directions, and if in the future it turns out that things are not like I told today, it was all a dream, right? Nothing real. But uh, let's now get into today's topic. So what is Application Express? Um, Application Express is actually nothing new, right? Um, Application Express is uh, in the wild since 2004, right? And we are talking about Oracle's low-code uh, development platform. And um, it's uh, a special low-code platform because it's, um, it's a low-code platform which intentionally, we would say, proudly focuses on the Oracle database, right? Um, as we will see, Oracle Apex runs inside the Oracle database, and Apex, uh, Apex doesn't even try to hide the fact that you can do cool things using the SQL language, right? Apex leverages this, Apex is built on this, right? Apex, the fact that Apex runs in the Oracle database is something which the product itself clearly states to its users and which the product invites you to uh, use in your own applications, right? So what, you can, what can you do with Application Express? So of course you can quickly and very, uh, um, where we, uh, you can create uh, applications in a very quick, flexible, and productive manner. Um, uh, very, often, uh, um, very often customers are using it for visualization purposes, but that's not, uh, that's not limited to visualization. And as I said, um, those customers, or most of our Apex customers, really leverage uh, what they can do with SQL, right? We have seen Apex applications where, um, and I will show you how this works, um, where uh, the most interesting piece of the whole application was some super smart SQL query, which uh, drove a chart or a report, right? And that's uh, the value of Apex, that we can do exactly this, right? Here, uh, again, a few use case examples. So typically, the first, of course, is rapid application development. You can really, uh, building applications is something which is really quick in Apex, right? We are talking about days, sometimes even hours, uh, until you get something up and running, which you can share with your internal or external customers, right? Um, you don't uh, low-code approach. Um, actually, uh, it doesn't mean that you, that, you, that you don't need to have any clue about coding, but you don't need uh, hundreds of lines of codes, right? Typically, the low-code platform uh, tr uh, allows you to concentrate on the, uh, on the, uh, on the, on the, on the important code, right? Uh, and when a tool, when, when, when a low tool, 
uh, when a low code tool could run in the Oracle database or in a database, then the important pieces of codes uh, are the SQL queries, all right? Because that tells the database, as we all know, the SQL query tells the database how, which data to get, how to aggregate, how to, uh, how to compute the data, and the tool is responsible for displaying that data. Right, um, replacing spreadsheets, that's always a use case which many of our customers use, right? That's a very tactical thing. Um, what does that mean? So uh, a spreadsheet which circles in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the enterprise to collect some data is replaced by a web, uh, an application which is reachable uh, by a URL and everybody just accesses the application with the browser, changes and reviews data, right? And especially in the US, um, extending enterprise applications, extending your Oracle eBusiness suite is a very common use case there. Well, it's not that commonly used here in Europe, but uh, in other parts of the world, customers are extensively using Apex uh, to uh, extend uh, eBusiness e suite dialogues with some customized, customized logic, right? A few details, right? Let's get into a few technical details about Application Express, right? So I already mentioned Apex runs in the Oracle database, right? And um, so it's a fully supported data. It's actually a, data, a feature of the Oracle database because it's not sold separately. Apex is part of the normal Oracle database license. And if I'm saying part of the normal Oracle database license, I'm saying every database license. So Apex is also a part of the free XE database, right? So download Oracle XE for free, and you can use Apex as well, right? Whenever you use Oracle, Apex is part of it, right? And um, so um, the minimum required version is 11G. I think most customers have that already. And uh, as I said, already um, it's part of all database editions. Uh, typically, if you install uh, a, a, a one of the later versions of the Oracle database, it's not installed by default anymore. You have to, to download and install it separately. But that's actually a task of about 20 minutes, right? It's included with Oracle Cloud Service as well, right? Uh, if you uh, subscribe to Oracle Database as a service, you can run Apex there as well. It's the same cost, right? As I said, it's a feature of the Oracle Database and treat it as such, right? And um, the architecture, um, again, I already said Apex runs in the database, so this is indeed where all the magic happens, right? So when you see an application page being rendered, here is the place where everything happens. There is a web server, of course. If you have a browser and you want to connect to some service uh, providing an application, you need a web server. Right? Some piece of software which talks HTTP or HTTPS and which your browser is able to connect to. But um, this Oracle REST data services, some people refer to it as the Apex listener. That is just an HTTP dispatcher. It's just a listener. This piece doesn't execute any code. Everything is executed here, right? Very close to the data. And that's uh, what I mean when I'm saying uh, it's a database-centric low-code development tool, and this is intentionally, right? We want to execute our uh, applications as close to the data as possible. So this also means if everything is executed here, we have zero latency data access, right? That's what I, uh, in the beginnings, I never thought about this much, but, um, when I talk to Apex customers, to Apex developers, they are using SQL in a totally natural way, right? Oh, I need to store some transient variables. Oh, create a table and store it there, right? With Python, Java, or .NET, you don't do this, right? Because you learn database is expensive. Not so with Apex. Zero latency data access. You need to store some values somewhere, create a table, store them, right? Done. That's um, possible because it happens here anyway, right? And that's what our customers are doing. Um, Apex is uh, in the Oracle database, and of course, um, the 90 or the 80 percent use case is that um, the data is here and the application is here, right? Uh, it all deeds on, uh, on, on, on data in the Oracle database. However, um, that's not uh, the complete reality. 
um, we always have uh, data somewhere else, right? There might be another Oracle database or another third-party database have, uh, with some enterprise data. Then we are now in the year 2019. We might have REST APIs we want to access. There might be SOAP APIs we need to access. Today we have an integrated world, right? And Apex needs to be able to talk to everything. And I will show that in my demo later on. Um, Apex is able to do that. The main use case for sure is to work on the local data. Many customers are using database link technology to access a remote Oracle database. And during the last years, it's more and more seen that customers are using external REST or SOAP APIs. And customers are using those APIs directly in their Apex application. And with, the, with, with Apex 18, uh, which was released last year, um, we added a totally new support for uh, external REST APIs. And you will see how that works. Um, a REST API, although uh, Apex runs in the Oracle database, and the most natural thing is accessing a table, Apex can access a REST API as it was a table. Right, and we will see how that works. Okay, so. That was a brief introduction into the architecture. Right? We could talk about a lot of other things. Um, for instance, one of my personal favorites about Apex is not only that it runs in the Oracle database, it's also, and that's a very important thing, it's a fully declarative tool, and it's a metadata-driven tool. And that's when, when it's so Apex actually defines a data model for applications. When we will create a an application right now, there is a table, applications. There is another table, pages, regions, right? All the components of an application that is all stored in a data model, right? And uh, we maintain that model, and when the application runs, the model is read, and pages are being rendered based on this. But think about this. You have all the aspects of your application being stored in a relational model. That's super powerful, right? Think about you want to know form, form items stored as rows in a table. Now you want to know, okay, which form items do I have uh, for which no help text is being defined? So typical QA tasks, right? You just want to know is everything good in my application, right? Think about having all that information available in tables, and it becomes a SQL exercise, right? Select star from items where help text is null. And you get a list, right? Okay, that's the task for the developer. Please update all these subtexts. Think about that in some normal code language, right? And you have a code review task, finding all the stuff out, right? So that's super powerful, right? But let's now go into demo mode. I would like to show you, um, and when talking about uh, applications with data from everywhere, I would first start with some local file, right? That's a very simple demo, um, and that gives you a first impression how Apex works. And then we will head over to access an external REST API. So when Apex is installed, everything is up and running. Um, the login screen looks typically like this. So uh, we log into a workspace. Apex is, uh, so to say, a hosted environment. It's installed in one database, but Apex uh, supports multiple workspaces, and each workspace is isolated from all the other workspaces. So there could be several other workspaces on the same database, but I'm logging into the Cesarski workspace right now. And uh, in that Cesarski workspace, I have the impression that the database is there for me and for me alone. Right. By the way, there is a uh, demo server for Apex, which you can use to try things out. Uh, that's apex.oracle.com, and you get a free workspace there in uh, 15 minutes. Right. No cost at all, just sign up, and uh, you should have login credentials uh, to that instance within 15 minutes or so. And uh, that instance actually runs about 30,000 workspaces, which means 30,000 workspaces, 30,000 database schemas which are running on the system, right? So uh, this also shows the Oracle database scales very well, right? Think about a database with 30,000 schemas. That's a lot, right? Okay, so uh, in my workspace, I just created a first app that's, uh, we won't look into this, and uh, the first thing is I would like to upload uh, a file. 
and I have a CSV file here. Let me open that. And this is a collection of movie data, right? Um, a title, uh, IDs, language, uh, and a few other data fields, right? Let me upload that into my database so uh, we can even create an application from a file, right? So I'm uploading that file. So Apex, uh, and this is a typical CSV uploader. We could upload uh, uh, native Excel, XLSX files, XML or JSON files as well. So again, you see um, we run into the, in the database, right? So uh, we are storing XML data, uh, CSV data now. So Apex wants to know, okay, give me a name for the table, please, right? I would like to store that somehow, somewhere. And uh, this is my movies, right? Uh, it's possible that the CSV upload contains some uh, weird rows. Those have to go into an exception table. That's this one. And then let me load that data, right? Right, now we have uploaded those 10,000 rows. We have created a table. We could review that table if we wish. It looks pretty much like the uh, CSV file. So let's continue to the create application wizard. And um, this is um, some template which, um, which Apex has applied for me so I can provide a name for that application. And we, I will get a home page, I will get a tabular report, and I will also get a tiny dashboard page. And that's very nice to start with. We could add more pages, right, to add more components right from the beginning, but um, that's only the creation phase. We can always and at any time we can add a pages, we can remove pages, we can change pages, since this is all, as I said, Apex stores all this information in relational tables and columns, so there is no code generator. And there is, no, never, there, there is never ever a point uh, of no return where, where it stops, where your ability to, cha to make changes stops, right? We can always change anything, right? So um, if you forget something here, don't worry, you will be able to add it later on, right? So the application is to be called My Movies as well. And uh, we also get some very nice features, which I think activity reporting is super nice. Yeah, maybe I will be, have time to talk about this as well. And then let's create the application, All right? And out of nothing, um, Apex created an application with 12 pages, All right? And um, as I said, we can always create pages and each of the pages can be accessed. And this is a view of, we call this the page designer. And this is the central place where you can control every little detail. You see, it, 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 it resembles the bit the look of an IDE, and it's as powerful, right? Every little detail can be touched and controlled here, right? So if you, if you are at the task, okay, this form field is uh, 30 characters, I need it to be 35, and the label is not right, and I need it to be a bit moved over there, and that's the place where you can control everything, right? Okay, let's run the, the application. So, and now uh, we see something interesting. I'm the developer here, right? I have to log in again because I now switched my role. I'm now an end user. There is no compilation or whatever, right? It's a metadata driven tool. Right, so um, with Page Designer or the Application Builder, I change the characteristics, the details, the attribute of my application, and as soon as I hit Run, I invoke the URL of that application, and Apex generates the pages based on the current metadata. Right, and um, let's have a look into the, uh, the tabular report. And of course, this needs to be tweaked, right? This is not, um, it's now it's a basic report, but the end user still uh, has, uh, there are some out of the box features which end users can start, uh, can start using, right? And think about what I needed to do for this as a developer. Oh, let me look for future. And I'm looking for back to the future, right? And this is actual end user functionality, right? So an easy search capability. Is just there, right? Then we have sorting, of course, right? We have column header filters, right? We can sort 
and users can hide columns if they wish, right? And users can even save their reports, and now I'm an end user, right? And now I'm a developer. You can see that uh, with the toolbar below. That's my developer tool, and this is my end user view. If I would, uh, that's because I logged into the workspace and I logged into the application. If I didn't log into the workspace, if I just, let me show you that, right? So let's take that URL, and that's the way how you publish your application. And I need another browser for this. Again, I see the login screen. Log in. And now you see the toolbar below is missing. I'm an end user here, right? So that's how quickly you get simple applications like this, right? So upload a file and um, provide, uh, provide uh, web pages uh, on that data, very simple. How does such an interactive report look like from the developer's point of view? Very easy, right? We have here our interactive report, and when you look at the source, right, it says, oh, it's on the local database, and this report is based on a table. Right, so now I might want to do some more sophisticated. Let's change that to the SQL query. And now I can fiddle in the SQL query, apply some cool aggregations and other stuff, and I will get a different, the, the, the report will work on a different data set. Right, you, clearly, you can clearly see how this leverages the database, right, and how you can leverage SQL skills here. Right, so whenever you are, I like to say, when you have a problem in Apex and you are able to formulate your problem, to reformulate a pro your problem as a SQL problem, all of your presentation work is done in that moment. Right, so uh, you have some data processing uh, task. Once you can uh, reformulate to a SQL query and you have a SQL query which does the job for you, then Apex brings it to the web at no cost at all. Yes? Sure. So, um, first of all, uh, we have the normal um, we have the normal database security which applies. So, uh, if, for instance, you can access uh, tables from other schemas, if you have the right for this, but Apex also has um, has um, this is here in the section security, and we have. Um, so-called authorization schemes, and an authorization scheme uh, can be applied to every component in Apex, and this uh, is a yes-no question, right? And uh, actual implementation can, again, be a piece of code or another query which then answers the question, is that user allowed to see that report or not? It can be applied to column level, so you can even display the report in general, but not specific columns, so this can be applied in a very fine-grained manner. Okay, um, let's add uh, another piece to this. So first I would uh, like to have a look at the uh, dashboard page. So that's a few charts which the uh, create application wizard created for us, right? So it detected that the language column has a few distinct values and it decided, okay, that's nice for a chart. And also the genre color is nice for a chart. So this was created out of the box for us. But um, there is, um, I would like to add another chart now. Um, and we have um, um, a revenue column in that data as well, right? So uh, when we look at the My Movies table again, so there is this budget and revenue over here, right? So, and now I would like to add another chart. So I would like to know um, from the total revenue of all movies, which part belongs to blockbusters and which one is the rest, right? So, and um, now uh, as we are here in this room, I define a blockbuster with a revenue uh, of 100 million or higher. I don't even know whether this is dollars or euros. I think it's dollars, right? Um, but uh, for here and now, a, a movie is a blockbuster when it generated revenue of more than 100 million dollars. This might be accurate or not, but for the test, that's, that's okay. So, and as you can see here, um, we don't need to walk through that SQL in, in very detail. The, the, the important message I have for you is, a SQL query solves the problem for us, right? However that SQL query looks like, and whether it's good or not, that doesn't matter right now, right? But it's the SQL query which we use to solve our problem. So, and let me uh, copy that query. 
and let's go to the dashboard page. So we have two regions here. And again, let's go to page designer. And we see, again, we see the language region over here. Let me, uh, and we see the primary genre. And now I would like to add another chart, right? And uh, this is um, the um, block booster or the revenue. So, and then we have uh, the series. And um, the source of the series is now a SQL query again. And I just copy that SQL query. The table was my movies. Uh, that's, that's valid. So we can have the label and the value, right? And I would like to have a bar chart is not that nice. I would like to have a pie chart. So let's have a look. Yeah. Right? Straightforward, right? Of still this can, of course, this can, this can be tweaked and we want to have, we might want to have it stretched and uh, we want to apply all sorts of layout, right? But that's the basic thing, the basic message of Apex, right? Once you have uh, the data, once you know, once you know what you want, and that's probably the most difficult question in, in, in business life, what do we actually want, right? Um, then uh, Apex, your invest goes into the SQL query and all visualization comes to you at no additional cost, right? And uh, whether uh, we uh, display a pie chart, a bar chart, or another report, it doesn't really matter, right? Um, when we look at that page again, I could add another interactive report, right? Well, maybe not here. And then let's again use the same query here. Come on. And now you see the actual numbers nicely formatted as a report, right? Of course, this, is, this needs a bit more format, right? Um, okay, that, that's what we can still do. Right, so we want to have the value, uh, format mask, and we have a few uh, um, templates we can choose from. So let's assume this is dollars. and this looks better, right? Very, very straightforward to build these standard components. Think about your own tables, your own data, and how you can build tactical or even larger applications just with nothing, right? By the way, before uh, heading over to, um, to uh, a REST API, we want to access data from somewhere else. Let me show you another application. Um, one of the one of the most important applications or one of the, the most frequent, frequently used applications within Oracle is, and I'm pretty sure this is true for many companies, is the employee directory. The employee directory is something which is used every day, right? Everybody uses it every day. One of the most frequented applications within Oracle. And the experts might, it's, it's small, but once you look at the URL, you detect an Apex application. F question mark P equals is Apex. The Oracle Employee Directory is an Apex application. It has been built like I just showed you, right? Of course, the SQL queries are a bit more sophisticated and are a bit more thought through, right? But um, all the stuff, so if somebody looks up um, uh, myself, me, and uh, even with spelling errors, it finds, and this is all database functionality and uh, it's application express, right? And this is an application which has millions of page hits per day, right? Uh, absolutely, if that application, uh, if that server goes down, uh, people notice within minutes, right? Uh, if not seconds, and this is application express, right? So this is not what we are talking here, it's not a CSV toy, right? This is, these applications are real. Okay. Um, we now have created an application. Um, we have um, uploaded data. 
and reported on that table. And I think you can imagine that we can report on other tables as well. Uh, Apex allows to put business logic at almost every place in your application. So it's not limited to the structured attributes. So at almost everywhere, Apex allows to put custom code blocks which are executed then at this given execution point. So if you want to have some block of procedural logic being executed on every page load, Apex allows that as well. It all runs in the Oracle database. So yes, the programming language for your procedural logic within Apex is Oracle PL SQL, right? Which is not the top-notch modern. It has no curly brackets, right? Um, and it has uppercase keywords. So it doesn't look that modern, but uh, for dealing for those kinds of applications is a super robust programming language, right? And you can really, you can build really real things here, right? Okay, let's now have a look into accessing an external API. So we have done this. And uh, I would like to build an application on top of the GitHub REST API, right? And uh, we will start with that URL here. That's the GitHub repositories, which are maintained by Oracle. And, um, what we did, and that's what you always get once you, uh, when, when, you, when you point your browser to a REST endpoint, you typically get some JSON back, right? And uh, this is a JSON document which contains an array. Each element of that array is one of the repositories maintained by Oracle, and the attributes are the repository attributes. So actually, the, the interesting thing is it's JSON, but with a, bi a, a bit of thought, we can see the table in here, right? What's that array, rows, and columns? So with a bit of thought and JSON, how this works, you can, you can recognize a table in there. Of course, it's not a table, right? It's a JSON, but actually semantically, this is a table, right? So what uh, Apex is a tool which can work very nicely on tables, as we have seen, right? So what we need to do is to enable Apex to treat this thing as a table, and that's what we would do now. So every Apex application has shared components. Here we can control parts of the application which are used on multiple pages, right? That's, for instance, this is a um, list of values. That's one example, right? Um, templates, themes to control layout, authorization schemes. I mentioned that or, these already authentication schemes. So uh, global settings valid for one application. Right? And one of this is web source modules, right? We are talking about external data now. So, and uh, of course, this is empty right now. We just created this application 10 minutes ago. Let's create a new web source module. And the web source module in Apex um, is a, a pointer to an external data source, XML or JSON, right? Could be a fully blown REST API, but can also be just a simple HTTP feed. Also good, right? Um, and uh, we will create that web source module from scratch. Uh, it's a simple HTTP because it's GitHub. I don't know which uh, type of server uh, runs the GitHub API. So for me, it's simple HTTP. Oh, come on. So, and I just type in the uh, URL and let me also uh, denote that Oracle I can write. Uh, I replaced Oracle with Cullen username, right? And then the default for username for now is Oracle, right? So now if I create it, Apex knows which part of that URL is the variable part and which parts are fixed. Okay, next. So now it um, tries to um, it uh, splits the URL into a server part and a service part. Think about multiple web source modules and uh, uh, accessing different REST API on the same server and you're moving that from test to production. Then such a separation makes sense, right? We have no authentication here. And now let's discover that beast. And uh, here you can, Apex now uh, collected the JSON, it discovered the JSON, and you can see how Apex looks at this if it was a table, right? Apex was able to identify the rows, 
and the available columns. So just a subset of columns is seen here. Uh, this will, as we will see, uh, contains 90-ish columns, and that first uh, uh, preview shows only 15, all right? So we can, um, 95. So um, we are, Apex now has stored all sorts of metadata for that REST API. And uh, we also see it's 95 columns. Oh dear, that's a lot. And um, I might have a look into this. And uh, to make it a bit easier, um, is there a report or a component which displays all these 95 columns? Uh, probably not, right? So um, let's, for now, hide all the columns. So now we control which of these columns are being exposed to components, right? So and now I have to click a bit, the ID, yes, we want to have that, the URL, yes, we want the name, of course, the size makes sense. Um, so I will just use a few. The site admin is also good. Um, I would like to see a few counts. Fox count, watcher, stargazers, the uh, stargazers count, open issues count, watchers count, I think should be, that should be okay. So let's save this. Let's have a look which columns we have. That's a, a total of 10 columns. That's nice to continue this demo on, right? We'll keep our components a bit more better to, uh, to, 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 to overview. Okay, now we have, again, we have stored metadata about an external API in Application Express. A Apex knows everything to convert that JSON to a table view. And now we will have Apex use this, all right? Let's create another table, another page, and I would like to have a report. And I would like to have, let's use a classic report for now. That is GitHub projects. All right, a navigation menu entry, yes please. And then uh, again, we are creating a report page and I would like to pick the data source, all right? And uh, for now, I'm using all the columns. If I didn't hide the columns before, I would see all the 95 columns here, right? That's the reason why I did, bef why I did it before. Okay, let's create that. Parameters, Oracle is nice for now. So, and now we have a report page. Log into the application and voila, a structured view on top of um, <laughs> Of, um, of the GitHub data. The, uh, let's, this, is, uh, this is obviously an image. Okay, the avatar URL, it's also a very nice feature of Apex. All right, we have an HTML expression. So, oh. so let's turn this into an image. You see the latency when we access that information. Oh, we could think about, hmm, why, why um, it's a REST data, but Oracle does not get new projects every second, right? Um, so uh, we are able to cache that. So I'm going back to the web source module, right? And here is operations on the details, and I would like to cache that for all users. And actually, I'm fine um, with caching until the next top of the hour, right? This is syntax which um, Oracle uh, database users know. That's a, a, a calendaring syntax which you can use to express repeating schedules, right? And this frequent, freak hourly by minute zero, by second zero, means at the top of every hour I want to invalidate that cache. So uh, this uh, cache is now valid now one more fetch which takes time, and for the next minute, you see, it comes back immediately, and we have uh, 4.95, so in a minute, the cache will be invalidated, right? So this is where we can, how we can leverage the database again, so we can even use that as a cache, and the application doesn't even notice, right? 
can we leverage SQL as well? Uh, there is a local post-processing. And again, right, we see SQL query, right? And if we look at this, right, again, we have some pseudo table here, right? And I can now start changing that, apply my SQL magic, join that to another table, and refine that data set, right? And I get different results, right? So um, you can see um, Apex comes, and I'm, it's 5 p.m., it's getting close. Um, um, you can, you have these components in Apex. Historically, they report on SQL queries and tables. And with the later APEX releases, you can see uh, it's also possible to point them to external data sources. And you have the same what you, APEX experience, as we like to call it, right? That you have a very high productivity, right? Just tell APEX what you want. You, you pick the component, you choose the data source, and then you configure the component. And all the low-level work, column header sorting, so this is a classic report. It's not as featured as the interactive report where end users can filter and apply all sorts of things. The classic report allows to do column header sorting. Right now, um, the cache uh, was invalidated, and uh, so we can sort, right? This comes out of the box. You don't have to do anything for this, right? And um, this pagination, right? This comes out of the box, and some download functionality, some basic reporting features come out of the box here. So do we have another three minutes time to make this dynamic, shall we? Sorry? We need to access this uh, ABI, so password. Authentication is possible as well. So I skipped that here, of course. Um, so in the web source module, let me just point you to that, is um, a part authentication, right? You can define authentication here, and Apex stores uh, these kind of credentials in a secure manner, right? You then have the answer, is it the end user who authenticates? Is it Apex who authenticates? So this comes into, okay, what's now? Yeah. So let me j just do one final thing. What I would now like to do is, is it possible to display other repositories as well? Right, and so I would like to have a search field. I would like to have an item, and you can see how I'm building an Apex application. I'm adding a text field. The text field will be named search. Right? And um, our report, our web source module, has parameters, the username, right? Which is hard coded to Oracle. That's the value I started with, remember? That's now an item, a variable, which is p5search. Finally, with every Ajax request, I want to submit p-search as well. And at the very end, if p-search is empty, I don't want to display a report. So this is a server-side condition. So item is not null. So the p5search item has to have a value. Otherwise, we won't display that report. No, but that's not nice. So uh, of course, the report should appear below the search field, right? Start new row, yes. Right, and now, and now, then the, that's a member of the Apex community who, who has also quite a few GitHub repositories, right? And by just providing the name, we can also use the same web source module to dynamically access data, right? So uh, within just a few minutes, we have created a reporting page on GitHub repositories, right? Um, and uh, you can imagine how you could extend this to make that application more and more functional, combine remote data with local data and many other things, right? Okay, we have seen that, uh, all this stuff. The last thing I would like to show you um, is the 
evaluation server, so if you want to try these things out, have a look at apex.oracle.com. You will find plenty of information about Oracle Apex. You will also see uh, what's new in our latest version, 19.1. And um, there is also, you will get started for free, points you um, to the place where to request a few workspace, right? And as I said, it comes at no cost for free. And um, uh, you will get your credentials to log in and to kick the tires within 10 to 15 minutes, right? So my invitation, if you never tried Apex before, try it out, right? There is nothing to lose, you can only win, right? Free of charge. What else do you want, right? Okay, thank you very much for your attention, and I think we have to clear the stage now. I'm happy to answer questions in front of the room. Thank you very much.